Mom, look at us. You yeah. just want the butt picture. It's uh, it was it's uh, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lola. Happy birthday to you. Make wish. Okay. Yes. I'm happy. Birthday. There you go. Yeah. I will never forget. I remember everything since I was seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for everything. Thank you for coming. And celebrate with me. I'm, I'm good. All right. Thank you. you. Blow them out. Blow them out. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, we gotta blow. Oh, blow hard. Blow hard. Okay. All right. Blow hard, mom. There's, there's no Come COVID. Come closer to so. it. No, no, no COVID. No, 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 get closer. No, get closer, no, mom. Get closer. Oh, oh, one more. 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 Oh, one Okay, so everyone, thank you for coming. Has anyone who's ever met my mom, your Lola, the first thing anyone will tell me about mom is this. Boy, does that woman have some stories to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember things. She sure does. <laughs> she sure does. And here's the thing, though, with stories. You know, on the first level, they're usually about facts. They're things about people, places, things you do, a time in your life, and all of those things. But something kind of that mom has taught us is that these stories actually, in a way, are only told because they identify who we are. They explain how we view the world in our experiences. They identify what we hold precious. Mom, do you remember every single thing since you were seven years old? Yes. I know. Quiz her, quiz her. But you only tell the stories that matter, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I keep some of it. <laughs> yes, I know you do keep some secrets because I've been learning them over the years, but what, what you do remember and what I've learned is that what you remember enough to share with others, in a lot of the ways, what I've learned from hearing you is it's the way you wish things to be. And so I'm grateful for my mom, and I will tell you one of my favorite stories is that when she was seven years old, she was the cashier, you guys all know this story, if you remember and listen, she was the cashier at the store that her father, our Lolo, had. And so as a cashier, what do you do? You make change, you took credit, you manage the credit book of people who couldn't pay. Utang. Utang? Yeah. Yeah. And then you hand deliver the payments at seven years old, walking down the street to make the payments to, I think, the import-export guy when I was a little kid. He was called, what, the Chinaman? Yeah, Bong Kong. Bong Kong! I want to know, Mom! Well, Mr. Bong Kong! So we were listening. So the Chinaman, Bong Kong. Here's the crazy thing is Lola is really responsible, which we all know, but when she was seven years old, it all happened for her. And as a kid, I couldn't even run the cash register until I was 16 years old trained at Walgreens, and then supervised and counted the cashier <laughs> cash every night. And you did this all at seven years old, Mom. Yeah, and I give money for the college of my brother and sister and my aunt. To the step, to that the is absolutely right. And so all these wonderful stories, I can't believe this, but I'll share one more story with everybody, is that I, I think we've heard all these stories, but at least for me in my mind's eye, but when you are telling your life stories, Mom, the one story you always told me is that as you were a little girl, you lied in Mamang's arms. Mamang is her mom, my grandmother, your great-grandmother. As Lola was lying in Mamang's arms, she told you her stories. Yeah. And she gave you the wisdoms and the gifts, and she chose to share those stories with you. 
just like you have done them all for us, as far as I can remember. We love you, Mom, and we love yeah. your stories. And so what we're going to do is everybody came up with their favorite stories from different parts of your life. And then the first one, before I, and so I can stop talking here, is that your sister, that oh, that sister. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, wrote a story for you. And you'll have this, but I'm just going to read it quickly. She's so it's, seven years younger than you. She is seven years younger than you. It says, happy 80th birthday to the most selfless and generous person I know, with love, Dadai. Sometimes I call my sister Nene, Lola Tanai, who is our grandmother. So this is Auntie Dada and Lola's grandmother, which would make her my great-grandmother and make her your great-great-grandmother. She was the mother of our father, Gregorio Trio. Not only were Lola Tanai's looks handed down to Nene, more importantly, Lola Tanai was well known for her generosity and this is a legacy that Nenang has continued. Nenang and I have a seven year age gap. She was in high school while I was in elementary school. One time she came to our school canteen and brought me food. I was so happy to be eating with her. Anyone who knows Auntie Dada, she loves to eat. She took care of me and she made me feel very special. We were able to reconnect and live together again after she graduated nursing and earned her license. She worked in the private hospital at the doctor's clinic in our town, Marbell. Upon learning that Neneng had worked at the hospital, Dr. Eustachio Vallejo applied and he was accepted to work there. Tassa and Neneng knew each other while studying at Far Eastern University, having met during his FEU internship rotation. When I, Dadai, graduated high school, Neneng was tasked to accompany me to Manila for my college. She was not only my escort, but she showed me where to go, what paperwork to do, and kept me in line. Little did I know that the room I entered was an entrance exam. Good thing I passed. <laughs> Nenning was there to enroll me and help me get settled into the dormitory, all while working on building her own life, looking for a job and preparing for her U.S. placement in the exchange visitor program. Sadly, our father, Gregorio Trio, died in a tragic accident on December 14, 1967. Again, she took care of me. Nenning and I traveled back home for the wake and funeral, and we traveled back to Manila. She was there for me during that journey as we both grieved. Without our father, Nenning took on more responsibilities for the family. It was she that sent money to our mother, Mama to pay for the loan taken from the bank. Nanang and Tas also volunteered to send money to help our older sister's children go to college, and so many other things. I feel very blessed to have known Nanang as my sister, the most selfless and generous person I know. Sending my love to her as she celebrates her 80th birthday. Dada. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, we have another call in to the festivities. This one, Zibby is going to read out. Oh, wait, I forgot the most favorite thing. Sorry, let me, while you get that going. So, Mom, I know you only, you didn't want any gifts. And then you wanted that plant, the mother-in-law plant. Oh, yeah. So there are many more, and everyone's going to read a little bit about your life, and they're going to give you one. Yeah. This is a letter from Manong Oh, okay. <laughs> and I just have the privilege of reading part of it. It goes uh -huh. much longer. She has lots of stories that are fabulous um, to tell you, but I'll read one of them. May 9th, 2024. Dearest Auntie Nenning, here are a few of my vivid memories of you during our teenage years and early 20s. Your 18th birthday party in that apartment in Quezon City. You and your friends were so lively and happy dancing the twist. Yeah. <laughs> so much young energy. You even sprinkled baby powder on the floor so everyone can slip and slide while dancing. <laughs> everyone was so carefree in enjoying themselves. No one thought about the possibility of breaking a leg. <laughs> I remember thinking how fun it would be to be 18 with nice, happy, and carefree friends. It was my green dress. 
lace dress. I bet you were beautiful. And everyone's giving you a plant, Mom, so I'm just going to keep going here. So this will be from Bonanote. And look, your little plant. Yeah. They twisted it around yeah. to make a little shape. Just like the twists they were dancing. That's right. That no. night of your 18th birthday. Okay, Emma, you're next? Yeah. Although I wasn't alive yet to meet Lola in her 20s, she told me many, many stories of her 20s, of her time coming to America and meeting Lolo and just so many stories that built our family. This was the decade where she was going to school to be a nurse and the decade she decided to come to America. One of my favorite stories and funniest stories I think that she tells me is when she moved to America. She tells me that she moved here because she wanted to find Elvis Presley. <laughs> um, Still looking. But she was disappointed when she landed in Jacksonville, Illinois. <laughs> to a field of corn. She tells me that she was confused because she thought she would see all the movie stars. <laughs> Through many of her stories of her time coming to America, she taught me to work hard, study hard, and make sure to spend time with my family. I'm so lucky to have you as my Lola, and I'm eternally grateful for all the hard work you've done for not only me, but everybody here today. So thank you, and I love you so much. Okay. Give her your plan. Yeah. There's a quiz later, Emma. <laughs> I didn't know they come in smoke. I didn't know either. I think I got you one also. <laughs> Rich, you're up next. I'm, no, I'm not up next. Yeah, you are. 30? I'm not 30. So I, I remember by the years of like real time. So I have 1974 yes. to 1984. So yes. mom would have been 30 to 40. It is. Oh, now. so that's it. I'm up, I, as I said, I'm up next. Hang in there everyone. I just have a few things to share. 1974 to 1984. For my school years throughout uh, St. Lambert Catholic School and starting at Loyola Academy. Lola led by example. She was a member of the St. Lambert School Board and was also our school nurse, which meant I couldn't skip class by being <laughs> sick. <laughs> but a couple times, Lola would pull us all out of school for the day to catch a Cubs game or to go see the symphony. Uh, these were also the years of Lola's free taxi service. Uh, for piano lessons, swim class, school band rehearsals, and junior high basketball practice. And when I was interested in wrestling at Loyola, she said, I will break your egg. <laughs> so I had Lolo sign my permission. Uh, but Lola still showed up for every beat. My final memory of those times is family dinner every night. Uh, the most memorable was when, when Lolo decided to have beer for dinner, with dinner. So he put it in the freezer, and then, and then we started opening it. It was spraying all over the dinner and the table, and I couldn't tell if Lola was laughing or yelling at the whole situation, <laughs> but I'm sure it was probably a little of both. So I love you, Lola. Aww. Oh, and I got you a plant, Lola. Mm -hmm. I, I got you this one. <laughs> Aren't they cute, Mom? Yeah. Where do you get them? They're Amazon. Old, they're old I got them from there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next would be in the years of time. Fingy Boy. 1985. I was spend a little bit. Mine's a little bit. Late 80s, early 90s. Give or take. Okay, so this is the tail end of my four years at Loyola Academy. For freshman orientation week, day, whatever it was, in 1991, I remember being on my campus of Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. And dad was at the helm. You were riding shotgun, as we say, and I was in the back seat of the van. If you guys remember that van, you could like fit 12 people in the thing. It was amazing. So I remember dad specifically saying, your campus is beautiful. You know, it's like, this isn't Paul in the city. This is, University of Illinois looks very different from Southern Illinois because it's very full of nature and rock formations and fishing lakes. And so coming out of four years of Loyal Academy, I said to both of you, I said, okay, so four years at Southern Loyal University, and then what? And I'll never forget Dad said the words. Then you will work every day for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm 18 years old. I really wouldn't know what to think of that. And then, you know, as a 22-year-old boy, where they introduced the idea of a 401k. What he meant is you work every day for most of the rest of your life. But either way, that moment 
you know, it all came down to what you have always instilled in yourself and we see dad as well, and that is hard work. Hard work is how you got this country. Hard work is how you thrived in this country. Hard work is what you instilled in your kids and your grandkids and many more generations to come. As you know, I'm reading off the cuff like I normally do. Um, yes, there's a plant involved, but mine also has a prop. And I, it's one of our favorite stories. I think it was Christmas. It might have been a birthday. <laughs> oh, it might have been a birthday. And it was Jack Jeff. was maybe <laughs> nine years old or eleven years old. A oh, boy. So, mom, her present to Jack. She tied a ribbon right around here, and she handed him this. And Jack's like, well, it's obviously a shovel, but it's like, well, what is this? And her words was, her her words were. It's the gift of hard work. <laughs> That's right. and yeah, yeah. As, as you can see, the hole's not going to dig itself. Yeah. <laughs> it's been put to use. And once again, hard work is how you get right in the country. Yep. And it's here and for many generations to come. Oh, you got her a nice one. Yeah. Oh. That's the best one. <laughs> story is kind of from my mom and dad but um, it's when me and Ian were first born that Lola was so excited to have her first grandkids that every day um, for the first couple months she would drive all the way from Skokie to Crystal Lake and just on back roads like no highways so yeah, quite hours. She doesn't do highways. highways. Yeah. <laughs> to come and help around the house and help with mom and like taking care of us. So she just like loved feeding us. I mean she fed us she fed me my first ever food, which is mango. Um, <laughs> cooking food and just spending time with us those few, first few months. And I just think that we're so lucky to have such like involved family. So yeah. Later on, when we're like in our toddler years, I just like my fondest memories are just like of spending like weekends and evenings where we would like pack our bags and go out stay in the lawn Lola's house, and we would just like watch movies and play games and stuff and. Lola would let us eat sweets and everything and anything we wanted and really like watch anything we wanted. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Lola would make sure like we would actually eat food and like <laughs> would be very angry when Lola was like sleeping next to us and we would watch like a movie we should not have been watching. <laughs> like, like really. I think I was traumatized a couple of times. <laughs> but Lola didn't know, so <laughs> but yeah. So that was like my father's so memory. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna skip a little ahead of 04 to 14 because my memory is a little faded because I was only 11 at the oldest from that time period. Um, but I'm gonna go to our your 50th anniversary, Lolo. Uh, I love that night when we did karaoke um, all together. I remember singing uh, and how, um, how I had so much fun. I remember singing Elvis and I remember going back to, to my choir years in middle school. I remember uh, singing that as a whole choir with everyone. Uh, I really enjoyed that, and every time I sung that song, every time I hear it, I always think of you. Um, I, I always uh, loved the, that era of music, the 60s and 70s around there, and I think it's because of you. Um, I hope that maybe in the future, you and I, can, we can just relax and listen to that music. And I think it'll be a nice, nice day there. Yeah. I'm like, Aww. I keep it a little short, because I don't know what to write, I get scared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Whoa, that's a good one, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mom, this is Allie's card. This is from Allie. Okay, so Allie says, My favorite memory with Lola was when I was 16 and she came to San Francisco to visit me in 2023. It was the end of my summer intensive program, and she and Aunt Irene flew out to see a class and helped me move out of my blood. We spent a few extra days in the city, and within that time, Lola would share many stories about her past. One thing in common with all these stories was that hard work was the most important value in life. She shared stories about her first appearance. 
The door was still open. Oh. Yeah, you win. <laughs> One point to zero Oki. That dog was going. Sorry, we're okay. Um, we're, all, we're all winners. Lola would share many stories about her past. One thing in common with all these stories was that their hard, was hard work was the most important value in life. She shared stories about her perseverance through difficult times, and in many ways it was a display of love towards those she was supporting. I carry these lessons that she taught me in my heart every day. Because of her, I know that through working hard, I can show my love and gratefulness to everyone who supports me. I think of her smile that she had after watching my class at the end of the summer program, and it inspires me to sp spread that feeling of joy through my art form every day. I'm proud to have come from this family that she built. Happy birthday, Lola. I love you and miss you, Allie. And then Allie got you a plan. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she sure did. Yeah, got a plan. <laughs> This is from Allie. <laughs> so how do you feel, Mom? That's all the talk, Allie. Yeah. Reactions, reactions. Yeah, the thing is, I'm happy because all those events that you have said, I remember them. They were past events. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when I say hard work, because that's what I've been doing, given the responsibility in the farm, we have, uh, we have rice, corn, and sugar plantation. And we also make sugar. And we're the first one who, who has sugar cane, uh, sugar, to supply the, the town. And then I have the responsibility of counting money for the first week of the month to be sent to the three students in the university. And then that time, we walk. We don't have shoes. We just have whatever they can, you make out to be a backyard, you know, like a slipper. And at that time we didn't have toothbrush, but there was no China people yet selling them. But we have the plantation of sugar cane, and we have people working for us. I will tell them I need three or four. Have you seen my sugar cane? Yeah. yeah. The long one, there's three spaces like this. I said, give us three, well, six, of that. So like, I was the leader of all the little boys going to school to walk two kilometers. While doing that sugar cane, it's like you're having a toothbrush. You chew. It was great school. Yeah. My classmates has always given me the hard work in school. So, so what song did you sing that Elvis song about you? But yeah, I have that. Ah, in, I, yeah. It was. I have, I have that in my. Are you gonna sing? Oh, no. oh that would be awesome! <laughs> 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 